Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Unfiltered Podcast. My name is Lee Stevenson. I have the joy and privilege to serve Converge in the church planning office. My name is Danny Parmalee, and I oversee church planting for Converge Mid-America. And we're just having real conversations about church planting and the whole church world. And uh, with election year upon us, um, I thought it'd be appropriate for us to just take a little bit of time and just talk about um, in church world. And specifically, I think this is one of those questions. I know I wrestled with it as a church planner. How much do you say about politics, if at all? I know that there's certain leanings and bents where people say, we just don't even touch it and uh, we don't have conversations. And then there's other that say, well, we'll do as much as we possibly can legally and not forfeit our, you know, um, tax benefits when it comes to what we say from the pulpit. Um, what's your experience? How do you, what do you, what do you draw from for you, Danny, in the past? How do you coach church planners today when it comes to this? Yeah. Uh, well, I do think that it does need to be addressed only because it is such a cultural uh, issue uh, that you should at least um, say something about it and not completely ignore it. Now, I don't mean tell people what your views are and who they should vote for, but maybe it's even a discipleship issue of teaching your people how they ought to engage um, culture. So again, for me, I'm I'm definitely going to be leaning on the side of stay out of it um, if uh if your people don't know who you actually are going to vote for, that is actually maybe a good thing, <laughs> you know, that yeah. you're not always dropping these little hints or you're just so overtly, hey, hey, this is who you need to vote for type of thing. I would, I'm going to lean on the fact that that's probably a good thing, um, but not to the point where you just ignore it completely and you're oblivious and your head's in the sand and you're not speaking because people are wanting to know. They're looking for leadership uh, in this area. How about you? How have you done this in the past? Um, I, I would say probably a similar approach. Um, I always address certain issues, um, from a biblical standpoint. Um, I think it's appropriate to be able to acknowledge the fact, guys, we live in a privileged country. The fact that we can come and we can worship together is a fantastic thing. The fact that we have the right to vote, mm -hmm. um, don't take that lightly. Um, and so in the, with the election coming upon us, um, do your research, mm -hmm. do homework. Like I think sometimes you got to walk your people through yeah. what the appropriate steps are and, and tell them, you know, check out the issues um, and research them, not just on what you personally favor, mm -hmm. what does the Bible actually teach and mm -hmm. try to, to allow the Bible to be your grid as to who you're going to vote for. And, and don't just focus on one small snip bit, focus on the whole. Um, but I always like to challenge our people as well that part of our freedoms in our country is we have the ability to vocalize and to say things without major repercussion. Mm -hmm. There's a freedom of speech. Um, but as a Christian, you don't have the right to be mean. Mm -hmm. And and so don't lean so hard into your, your liberties of what the nation does that you lose sight of what it means to be a Christian witness. Mm -hmm. in the midst of this season. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would maybe even take it um, a step further that even if you're saying things nice, sometimes because of the divisiveness of this nation, by simply proclaiming who you are and who you're voting for and even why, you sometimes lose the opportunity then to share Christ with someone else. So let's say you are a Democrat and you are a strong Democrat and your um, neighbor is a strong Republican simply by you just letting them know that you're a Democrat and putting that sign in the front yard, you've now closed off that conversation. Now, again, maybe some would say that would be extreme. at least in this season of politics, at least in, in this our country, season of yeah. politics, or just to maybe even ask yourself the question, what's more important for me to proclaim? Is it to proclaim Christ or to proclaim uh, the candidate or party that I'm yeah. a part of? So. No, I, I think that's great advice. And, and I, I would encourage pastors like, that is the discipleship thing. Like that's what you've got to walk your people through and helping them understand and even understanding social media. Like be careful what you post and how you post it um, because you don't want to create, you know, fences that keep people from engaging the conversation that ultimately could be an a, a eternal mm -hmm. um, thing in their own personal life, being able to come to know who Jesus is just simply because of, the red versus blue type of conversations. Right. And I do think it's, it's you know, it's become difficult uh, partly just because um, right wing conservative 
has kind of been, you know, lumped in or sought as being that's what the church believes and in order to be a Christian, this is what you believe. And then more importantly, people from the outside just assume that. And so it does put us in kind of a, a you know, a, a predicament, if you will, uh, in this kind of uh, day and age. But. And I, I think the other piece on when it comes to the political world and the political conversations, if you have the opportunity to allow your church building to be used as a polling mm-hmm. site, um, it is it actually provides a great opportunity mm-hmm. to be able to connect and to love people and to give people an opportunity to actually walk into your your building and see what you're doing. And so um, consider, you know, using those options to your disposal if possible as well. Yeah. Awesome. So have you, uh, do you have any good stories of either mistakes that you've made or times where you've uh, chosen not to and saved yourself? Man, I'm really glad I didn't, uh, I didn't go down that road. I, I don't think I've had any too many nightmares. I do. I think as I've grown and aged and matured, um, I think I've realized like there are probably moments I backed away from um, social justice things Mm -hmm. that probably would have been more appropriate for me to say Mm -hmm. something than to not say something. Um, I think specifically with some of the, uh, the racism and challenges that we've seen come in our country, Mm -hmm. I do think that there's a a moment where the pastors need to use a voice Mm -hmm. and to speak up for those that um, are facing some of the injustices that exist in our world. Um, and, but there is a appropriate way and, and, uh, that you can uh, address those conversations and not alienate everybody. Um, you know, and, and I, I think about it from both sides. You know, I, I want people of color in our churches, but at the same time, you've got to think from the standpoint of, I want police officers, um, in my, in my congregation as well. And I want them to be able to get along right. in the midst of the tension that they may be feeling. And so you've got to think of both sides of the conversation when you begin to engage that. Absolutely. Uh, so I have a question. I have heard of um, churches and church planters who will bring um, either uh, uh, public servants or candidates in to pray for them. Yay or nay on that? <laughs> uh I mean, and actually, didn't um, didn't David Platt was that David Platt that just took some some heat for that? I think maybe he had Trump well, come in or uh, Trump actually remember. came in, but didn't actually uh, tell him ahead of time that he okay. was coming. Okay, um, and so he's there. Yeah, so he's like, I'm going to have him come up and, and pray for him. Um, yeah. and I, I think you know, given that kind of circumstances. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. You know, if the president was going to walk into <laughs> my church um, and kind of unannounced, I, I, I think you cannot not address it, right. you know. Um, so but I think that was an appropriate way to be able to address it. But I mean, I can't tell you the amount of times the president of the United States has just waltzed in. <laughs> just waltzed in. Hey, church. guys, I'm here. It's, it's no big deal. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think um, I don't want to go above and beyond. Mm-hmm just trying to get people always in the door that have a political climate. Mm-hmm. But I think it is appropriate to remind people like you need to pray for those that are in public yeah. service. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they happen to attend the church, I think it's okay to bring them up. And um, if they're in the church themselves and they call this their, their home. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that may, I never had this issue. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I was in Milwaukee and uh Governor Scott Walker was a believer. So, yeah, I mean, he was at um, services. Not he didn't he wasn't a part of our church, but he was part of a church that we uh, were connected with. And uh, when I um, had uh, officiated a wedding uh, that uh, he was friends with the people, he was there. So it was kind of unique. Now, it's different because it's not yeah. bringing that bringing them up on on stage. But, yeah, how do you do that when it's actually someone from your church? that is running for political office and obviously every single vote and they're wanting everything. Um, how do you deal with, how do you deal with that? I, I think you do have to be careful of leveraging your voice and pushing people towards a specific candidate, but I think it's appropriate, you know, once maybe elected yeah. to be able to say, you know, cause you, you can't campaign around the church, right? I, that, I mean, I don't allow it when it comes to people selling business right. things and adventures, you know, yeah. In the church, why would I allow the political, you know, I don't want signs and all that being placed outside the church. Um, But at the same time, um, if they're elected and put into position, I think that's an appropriate time to say, hey, we we recognize that this person is going to be serving our community. We're thankful for that. And we want to just pray for God's wisdom over them. That's great. All right. Before we close here. 
was Jesus a Democrat or Republican? Go. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, guys, thanks so much for being with us. Fun conversation, a little out of the norm, but uh, we know it's a, it is a hot button and we just wanted to engage that. And uh, so thanks for joining us with the Unfiltered Podcast. Until next time, keep it real. 